Good morning. My name is Ashley Del Bianco. I'm a member of the parish, and I'd like to extend a special welcome to our visitors and folks who are new today to our church. And if you would like information about our church, our mission, our programs, I would be happy to talk with you after the service back at the welcoming table, which is towards the back of the church. Thank you. All right, good morning. Is that working? Okay, good. Uh, so I want to thank, thank Ashley and echo Ashley's welcome today for all who are with us, uh, either in person and, of course, those who are with us online. I know we have children in, in our presence today. Just remember we love their noises. They make us remember that we should be happy and celebrate in Eucharist. So please, please, please don't stress about kids in church. We love them. I just want to remind you of a few things that are coming up. Today is our ice cream social. It is Trinity Sunday, which is as much of a patron saint as Trinity Church gets. Um, and so it is our uh, patron feast. And so I invite you to stay afterwards. We'll have ice cream outside in the front and um, on the side of the church, on this side. So please stay and join us for that um, today. And then following that, around 1230, uh, 1245, we'll gather together in the parish house, uh, which is through these doors um, and up the short set of stairs. Um, to continue our inquirers class and today we'll talk about the Episcopal Church itself so we call it Episcopal Church 101 so I invite you to join us that day today uh, we have two things that are happening <coughs> today uh, but first I'd like to remind you today is a communion and a baptism service so um, for communion anyone who would like to participate in communion is invited to come forward um, to follow the instructions of the usher and come forward to the, knee, to the altar rail um, to receive bread and or wine. Um, if you would prefer a blessing or you'd like a gluten-free wafer, please let one of the clergy know today. Secondly, during the um, distribution of communion, we will have healing prayers in the healing corner, which is over by where the choir and acolytes are gathered today. If you would like prayers for yourself or for someone you love, uh, please join our healing ministers in the prayer chapel today. Um, and then two other things. Uh, today is the last day that our tech guru, Daniel Cooper, is with us. Um, he can wave in the back. Uh, Daniel helped us transition into not me doing the Mevo every week uh, and to do streaming, live streaming in the church. And so uh, we are sad to have him go, but he's graduating from high school and continuing on to college. So Daniel, we wish you well. And then we'll also, we also have the commissioning of our wardens, our officers, and our vestry today. And as you guys are gathering, so I would like the vestry to come forward and stand up here. As they're gathering, I'm going to offer our prayer for the prayer list since we have a baptism today and do not usually include that. So please come stand forward while I pray. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, those who struggle, especially those on our prayer list. The Hicks family, Bill, Bob, Ellie, Gabe, Shelley, Maggie, Marvin, Lee, Alex and Sarah, Claire, Edward, John, Joe, Robin, Veronica and John, Bahir, the Sufi family, and Tracy, that the hope born of Easter may give them peace, acceptance, and renewal, and draw them deeper into communion with our redeeming God. Amen. So if you'd like to follow along, there is a part for the, commun for the congregation to say, and hopefully everybody here has a bulletin or can share with their neighbor. Um, so uh, today on Trinity Sunday, we commission the people you have elected as vestries, as vestry, and those who have, and the vestry has elected the officers. And so we present, so, um, so we will do that today. So Simpson, go ahead. I present to you these persons to be admitted to the ministry of wardens, officers, and vestry members in the Church of the Holy Trinity, Philadelphia. Siblings in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by the one spirit into one body, 
and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Today, we commission these persons in the name of God and this parish to the special ministries to which they are called. Are these persons prepared by a commitment to Christ as Lord, by regular attendance and by the knowledge of their duties, to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and the well-being of the Church of the Holy Trinity and the Diocese of Pennsylvania? I believe they are. <laughs> you have been called to a ministry in this parish. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this work, perform it with diligence? I will. I will. Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of all in this parish? I will, with God's help. Now, will all of you here present who have elected these representatives do all in your power to support them in their work? <laughs> Let us pray. O oh, eternal God, In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission you as wardens, officers, and vestry members in this parish. Now I invite you to stand and sing, and, uh, sing with us the entrance hymn found in your bulletin.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God, all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas. Let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. 
God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God was everything. God was all there was, floating in the void. And then there was light and darkness, land and water, waters above and waters below, plants bearing seed and trees bearing fruit, creatures that swim, creatures that crawl, and creatures that fly. In many ways, a universe of opposites bound together by one creator. We believe the Trinity was there, even then within the singularity that is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the Son. And the wind from God hovered over the face of the waters. That's the Spirit. So the creation is, for us, not a story we take literally, but we do not have to look hard to find the truth within it. God separated the plants that bear seed from the trees that bear fruit. God separated the creatures that swim from the creatures that crawl and the creatures that fly. And is that not the process of evolution, life becoming more specialized, more and more varied through adaptation? This trinity, this triune God, even creates humankind in their own image. They... The Hebrew word is Elohim. That means God's, plural. Let us make humanity in our image. The image of God, B'Tselem Elohim. The plurality within the singularity. And God created humankind. In God's image, they created the male and female. It would seem then to indeed be a universe of opposites, of eithers or oars, light or darkness, land or water, fish or bird, male or female. Such a black and white view of the universe can be easy to see if we fast forward to the end of Matthew's gospel, where we are commissioned to make disciples of all nations, to go with authority and teach them to obey. Now, I am a proud member of Generation X, Authority and obedience were concepts we did not like. In fact, we bounced hard off them. It's in our literature and our music. Do not tell us what to do. If you are in authority, we will question you. And perhaps it's because these very verses from Matthew have been used to justify centuries of colonialism, the pillage and exploitation of countless other cultures, the stripping of culture and forced Christianization of First Nations peoples, the enslavement and torture of generations of Africans, 
all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have the authority we claimed, so you must obey. It's God's will. And so Christians of a certain day and age spread a very black and white, all or nothing view of the Trinity and our relationship with it. The Bible, however, tells us that the reality is anything but. Take light and darkness, for example. There is night and there is day, for sure, but there is also twilight and dusk, those in-between states when God sometimes does God's best work. The most beautiful time of day is the sunrise and the sunset, that in-between time that is neither night nor day. Think about land and sea where the two meet. You have states that are neither land nor water, but bits of both. And marsh and wetlands are some of our most diverse and most important biomes. Think about gender. If we can have a variety of expressions of light and darkness and a variety of in-between states of land and water, is there not also an entire spectrum of gender identity and expression where God can also do some of God's best work? And does not God look upon God's creation and declare that it is very good? So it is with the Trinity. We cannot separate the Trinity into three individuals who do three very distinct things. We see three persons who are bound so tightly together by relationship that it is impossible to discern where one ends and the other begins. God has pronouns, and they are sometimes singular and sometimes plural, depending on the Hebrew word used for God and they are sometimes masculine and sometimes feminine, depending on the person of the Trinity, masculine for the Son, feminine for the Spirit, and both male and female are made in the image of the Father. But the closer we get to trying to define or classify the persons of the Trinity, the farther we get from the experience of the Trinity. Trying to define or explain the Trinity is like trying to grasp water or wind in your hand. You just can't do it without losing what you're trying to hold. The Trinity is a human concept that we have come up with to explain an ineffable, indescribable, awesome God who desires strongly to be in relationship with us because God is a relationship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The fruit of that relationship is love which produces its own brand of authority and obedience. The authority Jesus is talking about is not a human dominion, but a divine authority. And it's the very same word used when Jesus performs his miracles, such as feeding the 5,000, healing the sick, and raising the dead. The authority of God is love. So this is what we obey, love. Love does not tell us to hold sway over the lives of others, to decide for them how to pray, how to live, whom to love. Our obedience to divine authority tells us to feed the hungry, heal the sick, and welcome the stranger, love our neighbor, and even to love our enemy. Our obedience to divine authority is a thinking, discerning, loving obedience that allows us the freedom to express ourselves, the freedom to be ourselves, and a unique manifestation of the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The purpose of going out to make disciples of all nations is not to submit or exploit other cultures, but to make a multicultural community of worshipers and believers where each culture is celebrated and uplifted where they inform and bring color and light to worship. It is important to consider the Trinity and the beautiful spectrum it gives us between the opposite poles and extremes because we're not just changing lives or fighting for rights, we're saving lives. This Pride Month, it is especially important for us to consider the many young people who face the danger of death because their identity may not fit with traditional models. 
their way of loving may chafe against old models of obedience, and they may not be loved or accepted for who they are. We who place our faith in the Trinity can help. The singularity that preceded this universe contains a divine plurality. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, but the Lord is also Father, Son, and Spirit, containing a multitude of expressions of self, billions and billions of us made as unique expressions of God's image. In the beginning, God was everything. Now, many billions of years later, God is still everything. And God's way of living and loving is now entrusted to us as we are called to go out to the nations, carrying the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now continue with the Holy Baptism. You can find that on your, in your bulletin, and we'll be at the back of the church. And if children want to come closer to see, if they can't see, you're welcome to. candidate for bat holy baptism will now be presented. I present Claire Elizabeth Flanagan to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce him. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce him. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce him. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you... Put your whole trust in his grace and love. I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And now I ask this of the congregation present, will you, will all you, you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? We Let us join with Claire, who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. I will, God's help. 
Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for Claire, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Fill her with your holy and life giving spirit. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the fellowship of those who come but sorry, through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, and therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify the power of your Holy Spirit that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, yet now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's see the water. Ready, Claire? Here we go. All right, Claire. Claire Elizabeth, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <gasps> and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good job, buddy. Oh. Two more things. You did get wet, didn't you? Claire Elizabeth, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. <laughs> Claire Elizabeth, receive this light and shine as Christ forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We, we receive you into the household of God, God confess, confess the faith of Christ crucified, crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. We welcome Claire Elizabeth Flanagan. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father, These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I invite you to stand as you're able and to say with me the post-communion prayer found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Trinity.